Texas High School playoff football from the Berry Center in Cypress, Texas on a cool evening. It's a 4A matchup tonight between the Brenham Cubs and the undefeated Texas City Stingerees. Hello everyone, with Ken Moore, I'm Brett Dolan. Great to have you with us tonight for high school playoff football. Again, we have a Brenham team. They lost their first game of the year. They've been undefeated since. And a Texas City team that's gonna take us back a couple of decades. No spread, they're gonna run the football all night long. Well, both teams are gonna run the football all night long. Both teams like to rush it over 40 times per game each. They barely like to throw it. You won't see them put it a lot in the air tonight. Both teams have a couple of dominant running backs we're gonna see this evening. Should be a great match. Well, let's talk about those running backs. We'll start first with Brenham because and they have an outstanding tailback who's closing in on possibly a single season school record. Yeah, Ernest Patterson, over 2,100 yards on the season rushing the football. He's had a tremendous campaign. Just a junior, small in stature, but big in heart. He's going to be running up and down this field here this evening trying to break that record. As far as the singer Reese are concerned, we've seen them once this year. Deontay Foreman on his way to Texas. He'll be a Longhorn. Another guy having a fantastic season. Yeah, Foreman's tremendous as well. Over 2,000 all-purpose yards. 1,900 on the ground, a couple of hundred through the air. So you'll see him receiving it and rushing it here tonight. Outstanding 4A playoff matchup tonight. It's the Brenham Cubs and the Texas City Stingerees. We'll come back and kick things off in just a moment. Think Physician ER. You will be seen by a board certified doctor in less than 10 minutes. With immediate results on labs, x rays, and CAT scans. For emergency care greater than urgent care, think Physicians ER. Accidents happen anytime, any place. When you need to be seen fast, visit Physicians ER. Visit PhysiciansER.com for a location nearest you. The time is now for live video highlights of your school's march to excellence. New sets up inside of the pitch. High fly to left. It's up. It's deep. And it's going to be gone. Legacy Sports Network brings you high quality HD video broadcasted by the best in the business. Handoff. Adam Taylor lunges to the end zone. Touchdown. This is the most, one of the most exciting things. With all the runs, hits, scores, and more, we're building a legacy one game at a time. I appreciate it. You guys at Legacy do an unbelievable job. Join us on pay-per-view or video live streaming your favorite high school and college athletics at LegacySportsNetwork.com. Legacy Sports Network is going to be bringing this presentation to your home. fans. I see a Raising Cane's tailgate in your sights, and I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but you have it in you to tackle that tailgate. To devour enough fresh, never ever frozen chicken fingers and cane sauce to make tailgate history. Show Thirst Who's Boss with sweet tea and lemonade. Not by the cup, but by the jug. Because this is our house, and today you eat with the best of them. Raising Cane's, one love. Official sponsor of all things that make game day delicious. Back at the Berry Center in Cypress, Texas, our game brought to you tonight by Texas First Bank. Texas First Bank has been serving the community since 1973 and has money to lend if you're a business owner in need of a commercial or equipment loan. Call Texas First Bank. They offer competitive rates, superior service, and the decisions are made locally. They're also a preferred SBA lender. TexasFirstBank.com, proud sponsor of the Texas City Stingerees, equal housing lender and member FDIC. 
You're looking at the Berry Center, one of the more beautiful venues for high school football, not only in this state, but really the entire country. Yeah, this is a tremendous, tremendous facility. Had the pleasure of broadcasting many games here. Good to be back at home. The bigger compiles of the Berry Center here in Cypress, Texas. See the fans from Texas City. Brenham Cubs in their green unis and white pants. They are 11-1 after an 8-0 district campaign, their fourth straight undefeated district title. And of course, the Stingerees undefeated this season. Yeah, you look at the team comparison, both of these ball clubs averaging over 40 points per game. Brenham averaging 40 points, only giving up 16. As for the Stingerees, they average 46, only give up 15 points a game. Both teams are run heavy offensively. As we talked about in the open, Deontay Foreman, Ernest Patterson, both guys over 2,000 all-purpose yards on the season, but it's going to be a big battle up front. Which one of these defensive lines can stand up to the offensive attack of the opposition? Well, look at those rushing numbers, though, for Texas City. It won't take long before they flip that odometer over to 4,000-plus rushing yards this season. Yeah, both ball clubs as well. Special teams could be huge here tonight as Brenham, will receive. They will be going from right to left. Temperatures to here tonight at the Berry Center. It is a chilly night. You see the fans in the stands bundled up. Temperature at 50 degrees. Winds out of the east southeast at four miles per hour. Clear skies. Beautiful night for some playoff football. That is the good news. The wind should not be a factor tonight. Stingerees are ready and so are the Cubs and the Cubs will get the football first. Ernest Patterson, one of our featured players tonight, one of the deep men for Brenham. He's number five along with Malik Wilson. They stand back at their 10. Aaron Clays to put the toe into it. And this one's heading in the direction of Patterson, but it'll go out of bounds in good field position for Brenham to begin this playoff matchup. Yeah, so Brenham Ball Club that had returned two kickoffs for touchdowns, so the Stingerees play it safe, kick it out of bounds. They don't want to give Patterson a chance to bring it all the way back. Take and a look at our team leaders, Ken. Yeah, absolutely. The quarterback, Caleb Hill, just a junior, 1,400 yards on the season, 13 touchdowns. Patterson, the main guy, number five, we talked about, 2,100 yards on the season. And when they go up top, they will go to James Holman, 543 yards on the season. Looks like the Cubs are going to make them re-kick. That speaks to your point. They've returned a couple of kicks this year for touchdowns. And if there is any factor, they're kicking into the wind are the Stingerees, and they'll be forced to do so again. So the Cubs, they want to have an opportunity to set up themselves in some good field position. Great night for football. Talk about this Brenham offensive attack once they get on the field. They average 39 and a half points per game. This is a Dayton team, or a Brenham team, that last week to Dayton. They were down 7 0, 12 seconds into the game. They were down 14 0 at the 10 14 mark of our first quarter. You'd know they'd love to get off to a better start tonight. All right, referees have it lined up, and we're going to re kick it from the Berry Center. A short kick that'll be taken at the 30-yard line. Still on his feet. Portland Sutton carries up to about the 43 in very good field position for Sutton and the Brenham Cubs to start things. Again, the Cubs are going to be led out by quarterback. Caleb Hill, Hill on the season, 1,495 all-purpose yards. And behind him is going to be his big tailback, or should we say his small tailback <laughs> with big yardage, Ernest Patterson. So from the pistol, Patterson will carry first and hit hard and drop by Deontay Foreman. The two men we featured in the open as running backs, a lot of players in this game will go both ways, and the tailback slash defensive end Deontay Foreman makes a play. Yeah, as you look at the Stingery defense, you see Foreman and his brother, they both start offensively and defensively. The big guy in the middle, Devontae Hinton, number six, 
He's the big guy on defense, the big linebacker in the middle. Great point, Cam. This year, more than 120 tackles. Last year, as a sophomore, he had 150 tackles on the season. A loss of two on the opening play for Brunham. And the left-handed quarterback completes the pass, and then it was dropped. It was in the hands of James Holman, who had caught 26 passes this year. It looked like he had the inside position in the step. Donald Lynch was there on coverage. Yeah, great defensive play. As you see Hill here with the play fake. Great defensive play. Disengaging the football, Armonte Foreman. Great play by Foreman over here on the right corner. So it's third and 12. We'll see what the Stingerees down up here. Dial up here defensively, four man front. They bring five. Hill with the pocket crumbling, tries to set up the screen, completes his pass, and it's going to be short of a first down. It was the fullback, Jordan Graves, into the backfield. He gets into Texas City territory, but he's about three yards shy of a first down. Yeah, you'll see him just slip out of the backfield, turns it upfield. Great defensive play, tripping him up at the last moment. Benilla, Benella, that's going to force a punting situation. So Caleb Hill with the quick kick. Nobody back for Texas City, so this one can bounce for a while. It takes a Brennan bounce inside the 10, continues to roll inside the 5, and it'll be down near the 3. 47 yards, officially 46 on the punt, 0 on the return. As we look at the Stingaree team leaders offensively, Andrew Allen, the quarterback, 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns. Deontay Foreman, 27 times to the end zone. And his twin brother, Amante, he's been in the end zone eight times so far this season. When we saw Texas City earlier this year, Amante Foreman got dinged up and wasn't able to play the second half of that game. Although they easily disposed of Galena Park 44-0. Since then, they really haven't been tested putting their two playoff wins. They'll begin officially from the four yard line, their first possession of the game. And it's Foreman carrying across the 10 to almost the 11 yard line. Foreman averages over 10 yards a carry. He'll be going up against this Cub defense. 3-4 alignment, Ramirez, Bear, and Shepard up front. Yeager, Nunn, Holman, and Smith. Patterson will play at the quarterback position. Lockett and Sutton are the safeties. One thing I'm going to focus on, Ken, as far as this Brenham defense is concerned, of course, how do they do against the rush? Last week it was the pass that caused them so many problems. Second and three, a first down and more as Foreman carries up near the 23. He lost the football, but he was down. And Deontay Foreman moves the sticks for Texas City. But last week, it was a Brenham team that gave up 334 yards through the air. They probably want to see if they can stop guys on the ground, but boy, Foreman's a load. Yeah, Foreman is a load, and I don't know how many opportunities through the air they're going to have a chance to defend tonight, because if they don't stop this running game of Texas City, you're going to see a lot of downhill running from the Stingarees. Old fashioned eye formation until Foreman goes in motion to the left in the play, blown dead. Movement on Texas City. Referees Mike Garcia indicates the penalty against the Stingerees, and then they'll back him up five yards. You were talking about this Brenham defense on the season, only giving up 16 points per game on the ground. They only give up 132 yards per game on the ground. They're going up against an offense that averages more than 300 on the game per ground. You talk about strength against strength. Yes, sir. Maybe the same formation, same play here for Texas City. Allen back looking for Foreman. This ball's up for grabs, it's picked! Intercepted by Lockett, his fifth pick this year. And the Brenham Cubs come forward with the big play of the night to points. Well, you're gonna see a throw into double coverage. Pop fake, it was a stop and go, but the safety over the top was there. Read it perfectly. Bad throw by the quarterback, and the Cubs have the first big break of the ball game. Ken with 
the way they had been running the football at ease through a couple of plays, does that surprise you? They go up top into double coverage in that position? Yeah, absolutely, especially on a first and 10. Back from the pistol formation, there's Patterson. Patterson shot down near midfield. Pretty good open field tackle by Donald Lynch. Otherwise, he might have been in the clear. And we're going to take a look at our keys to the game for the Brenham Cubs. They're going to have to disguise their defense. They did a good job on that set, on that first possession coming up with the turnover. Third down efficiency. The offense has to stay on the field. And E-Pay, E-P-2-K, Ernest Patterson, over 2,000 yards on the season. See if Patterson carries again. He will. Racing through the seam. Near a first down, propelling himself inside the 45. And that moves the sticks for the Cubs. And Patterson, he's listed at 5'6", 145 on the depth chart. A lot of times you'll see the depth chart inflated by 15 to 20 pounds, but I think those are true numbers for the Patterson. Patterson averages eight and a half a carry, and even though he took some initial contact, able to continue to move those feet, fall forward to get the first down. Hill lines up to throw. They'll try that pass again, this time intended for Malik Wilson. Two times that receiver's at inside position. Neither time has it worked, and it was Armonte Foreman there on coverage for Texas City. Yeah, Armonte Foreman, he's a really good receiver, but he may be even better as a defensive back as he breaks up that pass play. Second 10 for Brenham. Last week, a 31-30 win over Dayton. A late 35-yard field goal gave them the lead. Patterson, all he did was run for 287 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Hill lines up to throw, completes to James Holman, and steps out of bounds, shy the marker by a couple of yards. He'll be marked out of bounds at the 38. Yeah, Holman, their leading receiver on the season. You'll see him come open here. Holman on the season, 543 receiving yards, has a long of 57 on the year. He's been in the end zone six times, set up a third down and short. We're joined by Fox Football Friday on Fox Sports Southwest. A Texas City Brenham matchup, an interception by the Cubs, has given them a chance now to move into Texas City territory, facing a third and four from the 38. And the left-handed quarterback, Caleb Hill, Throwing to the near side, it's the fullback raise. He's got the first down and more inside the 25 and dropped it about the 23. Well, that's the second time tonight Graves has snuck out of the backfield for a reception. This time he lined up in the slot to the left, wide open, uncovered. Takes it deep into Stingery territory. It'll be first and 10 for the Cubs. This is a Brenham team that lost their very first game of the season, 10 to seven to Foster. They have run off 11 straight wins since. Good look at Caleb Hill, the left-handed quarterback. Operating from this pistol formation, they give to Patterson, again able to fight forward, sprint inside the 20, and dropped at the 19 for the young man chasing a single season Brenham rushing record. You see them start to pick up the tempo now, going no huddle, quickly to the line of scrimmage, trying to catch the Stingerees off guard. Second down six for Brenham. Soft snap, Hill lines up to throw, and that ball was off the hands of Tyler Watts dangerously deflected in the air, but it falls incomplete. Yeah, Caleb Hill off target on that one. As he throws behind his receiver. Had him wide open in the flat. Defending for the stage, Colin Abernathy, number three. So it'll be third and six for Brunham. Not quite halfway through our first quarter from the Berry Center in Cypress, Texas. A 4A matchup tonight, a semifinal Division II round. Caleb Hill, a 61% passer on the season, 14 touchdowns, only three picks. He's got a big third down conversion. He's looking to turn over into a first down here. Handoff goes to Patterson into that stout Stingeree's defensive line. Nothing doing, and it'll be fourth down. We may be in four down territory here. 
Deontay Foreman, Francois Bonilla there to make the stop, and you see the fans bundled up. It's not exactly cold, but it's a cool night for Texas high school football, and it looks like Brenham will go for the field goal. Tien Pham. So far on the season, two of six. Kicked a 35-yard kick last week. This is from 36, and it is no good. Wide left. He had the leg, but he missed it left. And the turnover does not provide points for the Brenham Cubs. So an interception by Texas City on their opening possession. Brenham misses the 36-yard field goal attempt on their second possession. Now we'll see the Stingarees once again as they'll take over first and 10 at their own 20. Look at the Brenham sideline, Coach Glenn West and the Stingarees offense back on the field with their quarterback, Andrew Allen. And then the talented tailback, Deontay Foreman, on his way to Texas along with his twin brother, Armante. But Deontay averaging more than 10 yards a carry this season. He has been tremendous so far this season. Both offenses average over 40 points per game, but the defense is playing well here, at least early on. Offset eye for the Stingarees as they begin first and 10 from their 20. It's Donald Lynch in the backfield, spelling Foreman. Lynch tried the spin move and ran right into the line. No game. Yeah, Lynch is no slouch. We saw him have a couple of touchdowns earlier this season when we saw them against Galena Park. He has over 1,200 all-purpose yards on the season. He's been in the end zone 16 times. It's a tremendous one-two combination, and we've seen that year in and year out from the really successful teams. They have a couple of different running backs, sometimes different in styles that provide the defense different looks throughout the course of the game. Yeah, kind of that smash and dash attack. But Texas City is kind of smash and smash these guys. Old-fashioned eye formation, Lynch on a sprint. Hit and then dropped. That's the right side of that Cub defensive front penetrating through. Big hit coming up there by Trademark Smith, number six. See him just go off tackle to the left, and there's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Great penetration. The initial hit by 67, Shea Robbins. He held up Lynch just enough for those green shirts to do the gang tackling, and the football came loose there, but after the play was blown dead. So third and eight. And this is not the type of down and distance the Stingarees want to be in. It forces Allen to look up top. Now he's going to try and get some yards with his feet, and he had some open green in front of him, but tripped up and dropped. Shy, the first down marker. Yeah, I think that was Eric Yeager that got him by the shoe tops. Prevented him from picking up the first down. So it's going to be a three and out for the Stingarees, and they're going to have to punt it into this breeze. Yeager, the linebacker with the stop. You see the special teams unit coming on for the Stings. Take another look. They have protection up front. Taught to step up in the pocket. Again, Yeager, a good stop. Trey Rodriguez with the running rugby style punt. This one's going to take a Texas City bounce and roll inside the 34 yard line, and the Cubs will have it back. Great look at the Berry Center. What a beautiful facility here in Cyprus. Tomorrow afternoon, it'll have another 4A playoff game between the undefeated George Ranch Longhorns and Elgin, of course, the winner of tonight's game and tomorrow's game. Could very well be back here next week for another matchup. Yeah, it could be it's a, a nice doubleheader, if you will, out here at the Berry Center in Cyprus this weekend. Tremendous game going on here tonight. Another tremendous battle tomorrow afternoon. The two Division II 4A regional semifinals right here in Cyprus. Caleb Hill goes up top. Oh, his receiver, Travante Johnson, had a step. And the pass was beyond his reach. Intended for Boy, Hill, you see the frustration. He knew if he put that ball on the money, it was going to be six points. Yeah, Johnson, he's been in the end zone twice so far this season. He was looking for number three there. Pass just sailed over his head, second down 10. Always provides the defense a different look with a left-handed quarterback. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of that Michael Vick effect. 
the ball comes out a little bit differently. You're used to seeing right-handed passes all year. When you're coming from the left defensive end position, now you're the main rusher as opposed to the right defensive end. So it kind of puts a different perspective on you defensively. Patterson just got crunched. Bonilla again, big number 50, 44. We've called his name already three times. And he's a wide load in the middle of that Stings defense. Stings, Corey Robinson, number 34, and Francois Bonilla, number 44. So it's third and long, third and 12. Yeah, Bonilla, 5'10", senior, goes 205 pounds, making his presence felt here in the opening 12 minutes. So neither of these teams really like these third longs. Of course, nobody does, but you're talking about more running-oriented teams than passing, and now they're in a passing down third and 12. There's a ball that is incomplete, intended again for Johnson. It looked like that route was going to be jumped. Again, they keep challenging Amarte Foreman. He jumped the route that time. If that pass is on target, he may pick it off and take it as a pick six the other way. Back to receive the punt, number three, Armante Foreman. And Armante Foreman will try and return this punt from Monday Colin Kolkhorst. He averages about 34 yards a kick. In fact, that's Hill is going to stay in a punt rather than Kolkhorst. As we near the three minute mark here in our first quarter. Hill gets rid of it quickly, a low line drive. Foreman's going to let it bounce. We'll take it near the 20. Going to try and work his way across the field. He's going backwards. Back at the 10. Had that punt been caught, it landed near the 30, and instead the Stings will begin from their 10-yard line, and none of the stop. Made a nice tackle on special teams for Brenham. Uh, this may be an early telltale of things to come. You look at field position so far in this ball game for Texas City. Opening possession started at their own four. Second possession at the 20 after the missed field goal. Now they'll begin at their own 10-yard line, digging themselves their own grave here early on. Let's go back and take a look at our keys to this game for the Cubs and the Stingarees. Yeah, for the Stingarees here tonight, they want to outrun the Cubs. Both of these teams like to do it on the ground. Stingarees want to do it a little bit better. They also need to win the battle up front so far. The Cubs have won the battle defensively against that offensive front. And we talked about field position so far. Field position edge goes to Brenner. Armante Foreman from the Wildcat, but you saw that Hanky come fly in right away at the line of scrimmage. You see if this is against Texas City. Armante Foreman, number three. Tackle was made by number 21, Jermichael Adams. Get our indication. Well, it goes from bad to worse for Texas City after losing about 20 yards on that punt. They get a chop block on the first play from scrimmage. Yeah, so that's going to be half the distance. So that'll back them up to the five. It'll be first and 15. Let's see if we can pick it up where it happened. A couple of bodies on the ground right at the beginning of that play. It'll move it back to the five. So it's first and 15. And now Andrew Allen back in the game. He'll go under center. And the Stings will go from that old fashion I formation. We saw him run it effectively on their first possession before the interception. Now we have more whistles. It's going to be a timeout for Texas City. Timeout. Texas City with a timeout. We'll step aside, come back to the Berry Center in a moment. getting better. Introducing the all new mouth-watering grilled onion cheddar burger topped with melty white cheddar and caramelized onions. Plus all your tasty favorites for just a dollar each. Every day, as always, there's a lot to love for a little a McDonald's dollar menu.
timeout, first and 15 for Texas City. Quick snap, was that football fumble? It the Cubs was. seem to say they have it. They do. Fumble recovery for Brenham. Talon Shepard, the senior defensive tackle, comes out of the pile with the ball. After the timeout, a mix up on the center quarterback exchange. And you see Shepard coming up with the recovery. Now the Cubs set up deep in stingery territory. First and goal inside the five. But Texas City must feel like they'd like a do-over on this first quarter. They've had an interception, now a fumble inside their five-yard line. And remember, this Cubs team, they were down 14 to nothing, less than two minutes into the playoff game last week. They can score first today. It's the fullback Graves with a head of steam, and he gets maybe a yard to about the two. Yeah, Graves been a big part of the offense so far. A couple of receptions out of the backfield. Gets the first down carry at the goal line. They're going to go up Temple. The pitch to Patterson, the little man, squirts through the hole, into the end zone. Touchdown, Brenham. The Cubs strike first with two minutes plus to go in our first quarter. 22nd touchdown this year for Ernest Patterson. Well, that one was pretty easy. You'll see just a quick pitch to the right. Got the kick out block, big 68 up front. Gets another push out block and Patterson squirts through for six. And the extra points is true from Pham. And Patterson getting high fives and handshakes after his touchdown. That puts the Cubs up seven to nothing. Two turnovers early in this one by Texas City. The first one led to a missed field goal. But this one from point blank range, the Brenham Cubs capitalize and they go up by seven against the undefeated Stingarees. Great vision for Patterson. Usually those speedy little guys sometimes like to bounce outside. He had that option, but he saw that pursuit in the direction, able to cut it back into the end zone for the touchdown. I'll tell you what, this is our first time seeing this kid so far this season. And he's quick as a hiccup as you saw him squirt through that line just to get into the end zone for six. Now, Texas City, they're going to have to settle down offensively, go back to what's been working for them all season long. And even sure in these, they keep their composure. Indeed, it's, it's not been a good first quarter in many ways. You should see the Foreman brothers go back, hoping for a chance to return. And this is when their senior leadership has to come into play keep their teammates grounded, keep them positive. Don't let them get down on themselves. Long, long way to go in this one. Colin Kolkhorst will kick off. So they've had three different guys punting, kicking extra points and field goals, and now kicking off. So not much of a run up for Kolkhorst. Onside kick, and the football is recovered by Texas City. All kinds of Free kickoff movement. Trace Rodriguez covered that, basically catching it with one yeah, hand for Texas City. So all of a sudden, the Stings on their back foot, so to speak, have great field position. Wow. Now that is a surprising move. As you look at the far side, the Texas City crowd, they're probably even shocked by that. You've had them pinned deep each of the first three possessions. Your defense is playing tremendous, forcing two turnovers and you come with a surprise onside kick. We'll see how that works out for the Cubs as they try to protect this seven zip lead. We'll put a star by that one. I'll be stunned if we don't get a heavy dose of Deontay Foreman. Foreman with the first carry and he gets a couple of yards, but that's a win on defense for the Brenham Cubs. And the play was made defensively by Tremark Smith, one of the linebackers. Tackle made by number six, Trey Mark Smith. Junior able to make the stop after what will be considered a gain of four. Call it second Game and six four. as the Stingerees are already in the Brenham territory, but trailing seven to nothing. Not a single wide receiver to the left side of your screen, the wide side, and Foreman again tries to work his way in that direction, changes direction himself. Foreman stays on his feet inside the 30 to the 29. 16-yard gain. He refused to go down. Well, you see the other 
big guy that we talked about tonight. Now he's a little bit bigger than Patterson. He'll go 6'2", 215. Compare that to the 5'6", 145 of Patterson for the Cubs. So you can be a tremendous running back. It doesn't matter what shape and size you come in. Heavy dose of Deontay Foreman, you would imagine, on this drive for the Stingerees as we near the end of this first quarter. Armante Foreman, the man in motion. Deontay Foreman will the carry. Deontay Foreman, he's loose inside the 10. He churned off a gain of 16 on the previous play, and he just went for 20. Well, those big guys up front for Texas, Texas City starting to open up some gaps in the front. You look at that offensive front, Latroy Way for the senior, Gabe Garza and Keith and Herring, both guards, along with the big fullback, Tarek Cooper, opening up some holes for Foreman. Last year, Foreman had 18 touchdowns. This year, he's rushed for 30. See if he carries again, even after back-to-back -back strong plays, he will. And this time, the Cubs surround him quickly, and he falls forward for a couple of yards. He's shy of the six. And that should be our final play here in the first quarter. The Brenham Cubs, they missed a long field goal, but they cashed in one of the turnovers for a touchdown run from Ernest Patterson. And after 12 minutes, that is our lone score, and the Brenham Cubs lead the Texas City Stingerees by a count of 7-0. Back for the second quarter after this on the Legacy Sports Network. in Texas collide inside AT&T Stadium, all vying to be crowned champions. Get your tickets now for the UIL State Championships presented by State Farm. Be a part of this Texas tradition. Log on to Ticketmaster.com. Long live being comfortable in your own saddle. Long live being tough enough to handle anything. Introducing premium performance, advanced comfort cowboy cut jeans. Two times longer lasting and made to move with you so you can move like a champion new advanced comfort from Wrangler long live Cowboys our spotlight shines on the best and brightest high school athletes and coaches the state of Texas has to offer get the latest highlights and exclusive features from across the state every week high school spotlight Sundays and Mondays on Fox Sports Southwest Brett Dolan and Ken Moore from the Berry Center in Cyprus. 7-0 running with the lead. And the Stingerees on the march. Yeah, first quarter dominated by Brenham. Texas City with terrible field position. But after the Brenham touchdown, they went for an onside kick. Did not convert. Texas City took over at the Cup, 49. They moved it down inside the 10, where they have a second down and goal. Stingerees well over 4,000 yards rushing this season. A big reason why Deontay Foreman keeps those legs moving, keeps the pile moving. And finally, the green shirts stack him up at about the three. It'll be third and goal. This was a Texas City team that in their playoff opener defeated Terry 41-19. They had 553 yards total offense. Last weekend, they won against Ridgepoint, a good team in Fort Bend County, 28-0, but it was scoreless at the half. It was a slow start. They've had one of those again tonight. Yeah, absolutely, but once they get rolling, we know it can become a downhill train. That's what Brenham is trying to avoid right here. They try to bow up on a third and goal. Third and goal from the three. Everybody bunched up in the middle of the field. Foreman will carry again. He's not going to get there. He's awfully close. You see the quarterback, Andrew Allen, calling for a touchdown. But Foreman's down inside the one. It'll be fourth and goal. Well, when you have a running attack like both of these ball clubs have, I don't think you're going to be kicking many field goals here tonight in this type of situation. Fourth and goal at the one. You're going to line up and you're going to go for it. I wouldn't be surprised to see a play action pass here. I'm surprised everybody bunched up. Allen himself, he will go into the end zone for the Texas City touchdown. There's been no indication whatsoever. Clearly a touchdown. Allen was two or three yards deep. you got to make that call quicker. Yeah. Now finally you hear the eruption from the far sideline as they get the official signal from the 
referee. But yeah, it was pretty clear that he was into the end zone. Not sure what took so long, but what? better better late than never. We'll see him pick this hole off the left side of the line, Ken. And I mean, he's easily into the end zone, yeah. and there's absolutely no indication. And maybe they thought the ball squirted free, but nevertheless, the onside kick backfires against the Cubs. Give Texas City great field position. They convert on a 49-yard drive to tie this ball game up. And Aaron Clay sets the extra point. So a brand new game tied at seven early in our second quarter from the Berry Center. I got no worries. Got no worries. Life is about making good choices. So when it comes to choosing the best emergency medical care, choose Neighbors Emergency Center. You could choose to see a board certified physician at Neighbors Emergency Center right away. Or you could choose to wait. You could choose to receive top quality imaging and laboratory services. Or you could choose to wait. You could choose to enjoy our comfortable private treatment rooms. Or you could choose to wait. You could choose to receive expert medical treatment while being treated like one of the family. Or you could choose to wait. You could choose to get back to your life or you get the picture. So if you have a medical emergency any time, day or night, the choice is clear with Neighbors Emergency Center. Care that counts, experience that matters. Stingerese have a touchdown to celebrate. Trey Rodriguez will kick off. This one's in the direction of Malik Wilson. Wilson with a step. Wilson with blocking set up. Gets knocked down at the 48-yard line. Strong return. Good field position for Brenham. If he doesn't hesitate, if he just continues to go to the outside, I think he has a much larger return. You saw him hesitate there. That allows the defense to trip him up before midfield. But nevertheless, good field position for the Cubs. They'll take over first and 10. That last Texas City drive. 49-yard drive after the failed onside kick. Took 319 off the clock. Andrew Allen, one-yard touchdown. Extra point is good. We're tied at seven. He said Deontay Foreman will get a heavy workload that drive. He did every carry until the final play, and the glory went to Allen. Short carry there for the Cubs on first down. Takes the football towards midfield. And it was Walter Peter Thomas, the one of the backup the quarterback, quarterback with the carry. Game to Thomas does provide them a pretty good rushing QB. He's carried for nine rushing touchdowns this year. So while Hill is more of the thrower, Thomas more of the rusher. Yeah, he has been very productive in the opportunities that he's been given so far this season running the football. So when Walter Thomas is in the game, you talk about two teams that may not throw the football unless they absolutely have to. They're going to grind it out on the ground. Patterson dropped. And the Stingeries defense comes up and makes a play. Corey Robinson, one of the first there. You can see number 34, Robinson come flying in, beat his man, and then drop Patterson at the line of scrimmage. No gain. It'll be third and eight from midfield. And this is one of these throwing downs that these teams really don't want to find themselves in tonight. <laughs> Well, they've been pretty successful with going to the fullback out of the backfield. We'll see what they come up with here on this third down opportunity. Caleb Hill, the left-handed QB, back in the game from the gun, operating quick. Throw in the middle, completes his pass inside the 25-yard line. James Holman on the receiving end. His 27th catch this season. Good throw from Caleb Hill. Well, Holman is their big play guy. He averages nearly 21 yards per reception. Picks up 17 on that throw and catch. Big first down for the Cubs. Jordan Coffey just holding on to the shoe right there if Holman wasn't going to let go. But a big gain, and the Cubs now on the march in this 7-7 game, a 4A playoff matchup tonight from Cyprus. Patterson sprinting out the wheel route. Deep ball towards the end zone. A flag flies. Pass was intended for Sutton. But this one's going to go against the Stingerees. Yeah, they're going to get a holding penalty in the secondary. 
for. It won't be pass interference. It won't be 15 yards. It'll be the lesser variety. I think that was Zach Powell who was there on coverage for Texas City. Indeed, that's the call. Hold on number nine, Zach Powell, and the Cubs will continue their march as we take another look. Yeah, great protection that time. He had all the time in the world. Penalty occurred earlier in the play. Had a little bit of the green jersey. So that'll be 10 yards and automatic first down. So now, after a slow start, both of these offenses starting to get warmed up here as the temperatures continue to drop. <laughs> They're in reverse proportion. 7-7 seven, seven game with Texas City and Brenham. Joined by Fox Football Friday and Fox Sports Southwest. The Stingerees just scored a tie, but the Cubs on the march. And they're nearing the red zone of Texas City. Yeah, both teams, neither team scored on their first three possession, fourth possession for Brenham after a fumble inside the Texas City five-yard line, two-yard touchdown run by Ernest Patterson. Texas City came back with a nice 49-yard drive. Andrew Allen on the quarterback sneak. We're tied at seven. Hill. Uh-oh. It's picked. This one's going the other direction. Texas City and Zach Powell with the touchdown. Powell just committed the penalty two plays prior. Redeems himself with a pick six, and the Stings take the lead for the first time tonight. Well, I saw that before it happened. You see the play fake, but watch him. He hesitated and allowed Powell to jump the route, and once he grabbed the football, no one was going to get him down the far sideline as he takes it to the house. Not even Mike Tomlin could have made the tackle on that play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you saw that last <laughs> night. <laughs> 74 yards on the pick six by Powell. Wow. Aaron Clay is on to try and add the extra points. And it's through. So the undefeated Texas City Stingerees down 7 nothing early have run off a couple of touchdowns, 14 straight. And they have the lead with 7.49 to play in our first half in this 4A playoff matchup. And now those fans on the far sideline have something to cheer about from Texas City. That hot chocolate is a little bit warmer now. Those nachos taste a little bit better now on the far sideline. They've seen their stingerees come back to go up by seven. This was the defense for Texas City that last week against Ridge Point, an outstanding team from Fort Bend County. Ridge Point had 117 total yards. So after That's giving up that early score, the they saw the Cubs the on the march, maybe a chance to regain the lead, and the defense rises up and makes the play. Yeah, and I mean, you have to look at the throw there also by Allen. He hesitated on that throw. He should have just thrown it away or took the sack. And it turns into disaster for Brenham. So now we'll see how they respond being down by seven. Malik Wilson did a nice kickoff return near midfield the last time that Trey Rodriguez kicked one away. We'll see if he gets a chance to make another play for the Brenham special teams. And it's heading in his direction. Wilson from the 20. Malik Wilson trying to get outside. Wilson! One man to beat, and he's drugged down at the same spot midfield, and it was the kicker, Rod Riggis, who maybe saved a big play from the Brenham Cubs. Well, unfortunately, it's not 1975, and there were no tearaway jerseys. That's because if there was one, he would have kept running. Great play by Rod Riggis to drag him down from behind. <laughs> They take a piece of that 13 jersey home to the house with them. <laughs> but back-to-back -back outstanding kickoff returns from Wilson, giving the Cubs great field position again. Yeah, once again, right near midfield. Last time at the 48, this time at the 49. Almost the exact same spot, but they're going to hope for different results this time. Ernest Patterson crunched in the backfield. Wow. Nowhere to go. Number five, Ernest Patterson carrying the ball. It was Colin Abernathy. 
the linebacker up to make another stop right. for the Stings defense. Look, he's going up against the defense. It only gives up 168 yards per game total. They only give up 73 yards on the ground per game. And they're going against a back who averages more than 200. This is strength against strength. Right now, Texas City is winning defensively. Caleb Hill tries to throw oh, again. Boy. Just sails one over the head of Tyler Watts. Again, the left-handed QB As loading up. For Tyler Watts, number three, and and there was defensive pressure there, so that may not have been the worst thing to see that pass sail wide and out of bounds. Yeah, and, and that could have been dangerously close to another pick six. He's on the near hash, and he's throwing all the way across the field. That is a long throw in these breezy, cold conditions. Now, Hill is an accurate quarterback, completing almost 60% of his tosses this year. He had thrown only three INTs all season, but in the last drive, through the pick six, third and 13, out of the backfield, wheel route. Ernest Patterson popped it bounds hard by Powell. So Powell had the pick six on the previous drive, and he will deny the Cubs a first down and possibly force a punt here. Yeah, now decision time over here on the Brenham sideline as they face the fourth and five. Coach Glenn West. See what he'll draw up here. Well, he's going field. for it. And this is a Coach Glenn West that went for the onside kick after the first touchdown. And now you see Hill, who's also the punter, drop back a couple of steps so he could kick, and he will. Angles one to the right sideline, and this will take a brunt of bounce. Inside the 10 and out of bounds at around the 7. Great kick from Caleb Hill trying to pin the stings deep. Texas City leading 14-7. Texas City now back in familiar territory with their back to their own end zone. Their first three possessions started at their own four, their own 20, then their own 10, and they got a break. Really, the momentum shifted in this ball game with that onside kick. Remember we said we we're going to put a star by that one. That allowed Texas City to get that good field position. They marched down, got the touchdown. Then they come back with the pick six to take that 14-7 lead. Because at that point, Brennan missed a field goal in the first quarter. They had the touchdown, the 7-0 advantage. Allen, how about this? Throwing from Anira's goal line. That's Armate Foreman. Another future Texas Longhorn, and he's dropped shy of the 15. And again, you'll see a lot of these players going both ways here tonight. You've seen Foreman make some great plays from his cornerback position. This time as a wide out, makes a man miss, picks up some nice yardage, it'll be second and three. James Holman made that tackle. We've seen him make a couple of big catches for the Brenham Cubs as a wide receiver. So a lot of two-way players here in 4A football. Halfway through our second quarter from Cyprus, the Stings with the seven-point lead in the football. There's Armante Foreman of the Wildcat. Nowhere to go. The Cubs cover that play quickly and efficiently. That play looked a little disjointed, and I'm not sure either team was ready for the snap on that one. Okay, the ball was Armante Foreman, number two. Jay Robbins made the tackle. He came he, up with a big fumble recovery inside the five that set up the Brenham touchdown back in the first quarter. Third down and two. So now it's third and two, third and short. Deontay Foreman has not been in this drive. Donald Lynch lines up as the tailback in this I formation for Coach Cervix Stinger Reeves. Lynch with the carry, Lynch with the first down, but there is a marker down in the area of holding thrown from the ref at about the 15. And Lynch on the season. He has over 1,100 yards himself. So he has been tremendous running the football, but that first down carry is going to come back. See if we can pick up the holding that will nullify this first down. It looks like a low jersey there by the center, 56. That may have been it. So this Cubs defense, again, another chance maybe to get off the field and get the football back down seven points. And still over five minutes to go here in the first half. Winner of this game. Next weekend, we'll get the winner of tomorrow's George Ranch Elgin game, also played here at the Berry Center. I will suspect it'll be a little bit warmer tomorrow afternoon <laughs> than tonight. <laughs> if it was anything like today, it was a beautiful day out. Beautiful night for football. Third down 
and Long. Allen with a throw that was caught by Foreman. He gave up the first down, then able to move out to the 20. That's a big time throw and a first down pickup for the Stings. Uh, you see his hands, great hands by Foreman on that far sideline to come up with the catch. Good job hanging in the pocket by Andrew Allen. Look at that catch. He has to drill that one in. Excellent throw, excellent catch. Great coverage on the far sideline as well. Just a better throw and catch to pick up the first down. Now Allen only a 48% completion over the course of the season. Made a strong throw there. And Lynch runs into the line of scrimmage at the 21. Carry the ball with number two, Donald Lynch. To Brenham defense that last week. Ryan Nunn, 22, gave up 30 Derek points, Jager. but they still found a way to get the win. They had an early 7-0 lead tonight. Yeah, they give up 266 yards per game right down the middle. 133 on the ground, 133 through the air. This is a Brenham team that's really not tested in their district. Four straight years, they've gone undefeated in district play. Second and seven carry for Lynch. Tries a little cutback that maybe gets him an extra yard, but it's going to be third and long. Attempting to go around the That's right all that good blue bell ice cream through. down there. Good <laughs> big. <laughs> they got a good pipeline down there in Brenham. Came to the 24-yard line. Third down and six. Cubs defense a chance to get off the field here as Texas City faces a third and six. Well, we talked about third down efficiency and our keys to the game which defense could get themselves off the field. The longer they stay on the field, the longer they will wear down. Pitch sweep for Lynch. And he's near a marker, but shy. He gets to the 29, he had to reach the 30. Started running sideways there, trying to effort forward for the first down. But it was Neil Mathis, their first on the defense for Brennan that will bring up a fourth and one. Mathis, the big senior defensive lineman, six foot, 275. And watch the hit that he'll put on the tailback here. Right there from behind. Ooh. <laughs> That's a big time hit. Lynch didn't see that one coming. What, is Sting's thinking about going for this? Uh, I would think not. They may think about it. <laughs> They'll run some clock and call a timeout. 2.34 to play in our second quarter. 14-7, Texas City with the lead. With our Name Your Price tool, people pick a price and we help them find a policy that works for them. Mm. Also, we've been working on something very special. <gasps> One day, the world, <laughs> no, the universe, will have the pricing power they deserve. <laughs> we'll work on it. Watch him. Trey Rodriguez on to punt. Going to give this quite a run up before he lets one go. Takes a bit yeah, of a run of bounce. It, guys. Back to the 45. Decent field position for Brenham. Not a lot of time left here in the first half. But Ken, what do you think this Cubs offense will try and do uh, to see if they can tie up this game before halftime? Well, they still have three timeouts available. So they have the entire repertoire of their offense available. I would try to get Patterson out in space. He's been pretty, pretty bottled up against this front seven of the Texas City defense. Haven't, been, haven't had a lot of success running the football here. So I'll try to get Patterson maybe out on a little swing pass, a little screen, see if you can try to get him in the open field. He's going to line up in the slot, three receivers to the right, two to the left side of your screen. Hill back to throw. Completes a pass. That's going to be a first down and more. Good beginning on first down. Pass was caught by Tyler Watts, his 25th catch this season. 
Now the Cubs, even though the clock is stopped by going out of bounds and moving the sticks, they're going to go up tempo. Low snap for Hill. He'll come up, chuck it again. The pass went right through the hands of the intended target. That was Travante Johnson. A little bit high with a pass he should have caught. Depending for the stings was Corey Johnson, number four. So now you're looking at a second down situation here. And with Texas City, you want to try to protect that seven point lead. See if they try to dial up some pressure against Caleb Hill. We saw him make the one mistake with the pick six. See if he can force him into a second one. I've seen Ernest Patterson available at open in some wheel routes. They haven't gone in his direction. He lines up now in this pistol behind Caleb Hill. Patterson will carry. Patterson, how about the little guy spinning away? You're talking about a running back that is 5'6", 145 pounds. He was running downhill. Yeah, he picks up nine on that carry, so it's going to be third down and short. And again here, pistol formation just running off the left side. Breaks one tackle there. Then the spin move runs through a linebacker. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, you're running through Corey Robinson, who goes 5'11", 240. That's about 100 pounds on Patterson. How about this third and two? They're going to go up top. Pass is complete to Watts. He'll have the first down. He'll step out inside the 30, and the Cubs are on the march with a minute and a half to go in the second quarter. Yeah, Tyler Watts, another small player. He only goes 5'7", a buck 55. Yeah, he picks up a big first down inside the 30. Minute and a half to go. Cubs still have all three timeouts remaining. Good looking Brenham offense on this drive. Yeah, Caleb Hill has calmed down. His passes have been on point thus far on this possession. Bunch formation here. Now Patterson swings out to the right. Pass hitting to the end zone. There's Powell again. He nearly picked his second. Powell was on the coverage trying That's to guard Cortland Sutton. We've called Zach Powell's name a number of times already this evening. Yeah, you might want to stay away from number nine. He's had tremendous coverage so far in this ball game. He looked like the receiver on that play. Well, sure did. Clock stopped. Now Hill looking to the sideline facing a second and 10 from the Texas City 27. Brenham lost in their opening week. They've run off 11 straight W's since. They led early tonight 7 0 with the Stings that provided the last two touchdowns. Patterson, he's loose to the 20 and dropped. It'll be third down. Patterson looked like he was one step or one spin move away from really making things interesting. It's hard to run through Devontae Hinton. He's the leading tackler for Texas City. And he came up with a big stop for the Stingarees. As you mentioned, looks like Patterson was headed to the end zone, but Hinton with the big stop. Brenham will take their first time out. Time out with the buck one to play here in our second quarter. You see our score, 14-7, Texas City with the lead. This was a Texas City team that last year lost to Fort Ben Marshall in the area finals. We saw Marshall earlier this season look like a pretty good 4A football team. They lost to George Ranch last weekend in the cold conditions in Sugarland. But the Stingerees, they've been loading up for this season, really, Ken, since last year. They began this year 14 returning starters, and they knew they were going to have a pretty good chance to make a special run this year. Well, so far, they have an undefeated season. They've rarely been challenged. They've dominated just about every opponent. But now they have a battle on their hands tonight in this regional semifinal going against an 11-1 Brenham team who's facing a third and four from their 21. Five receivers in the formation. Brenham moved. They got away with it. The pass is complete. And that's James Holman. He's got the first down. It'll be first and goal from the seven. You get a chance to see this play again. I think there was movement the left side of the line. Yeah. It was pretty quick, though. Hard to call that one. Good play design. Nice catch by Holman on that low throw from Hill. So the Cubs on the march, clock rolling. Hill, here comes the pressure, able to step away. And then he's crunched. He fumbled the football. It's still loose. 
Cameron Marino looked like he had it, and it belongs to the Stings. No. Oh, the official pointed Give the wrong to, way. Yeah, Brenham got it back. Wow. You see the line judge, he pointed in Texas City's direction, and all of a sudden the officials then confer. We're going to have to see this again to tell when that possession took place. I think the officials got it right the second time. I believe Brenham, either they recovered it or it went out of bounds. Cameron Marino had it. My goodness, he had that football locked up. Now, if they say he had it and he was down by contact, that would give the ball to Texas City. Here's a look at it again. You'll see the pressure coming from the left side. He does a great job to escape it. But then the big hit up the middle there will draw the football loose. Now, here's the question. He has possession, and it's knocked out before he goes down. So the ball is still loose. And, and then it was Marino who kicked it. Well, there was no muff. They recovered and then had it stripped away again. Right. So he got the terminology wrong, but he got the call right. Should be Brenham football. Correct call by the referee. We'll see it once again here. Great shot by a camera crew. He had it and lost it. Now the second recovery here on the sideline by the Cubs. Now this should be a first down because it was a change of possession where Texas City had it, fumbled it, and gave it back to Brenham. If they're but standing by that muscle. They still call. have it at second and 13 because they say he never had possession of the initial fumble. I would beg to differ. I would too. 50% <laughs> right, Brenham got it back, but they should have a first down. Oh boy. Football's loose again. This time I think the Stings have it. Or are the Cubs back on it one more time, trying the double reverse. And the Cubs so fortunate, the second fumble in a row, and they're able to hop on their own miscue. Well, we had a regional semifinal at the Barnum and Bailey Circus. <laughs> and my goodness. Great penetration that time again by Francois Bonilla, who's been all over the football field here tonight. Disrupts that reverse. And now Brenham in a huge hole, third and goal from the 22. Walter Thomas was the man who fumbled that flip in his direction, but a timeout on the field with 29 seconds to play here in our second quarter. And boy, Brenham has to be so very fortunate just to have the football and still have a chance at points and for Texas City well they've made two plays in a row they have to be kicking themselves for not recovering those fumbles yeah they had golden opportunities to end this possession for the Cubs situation at hand now if you're Brenham you still have one timeout remaining so you can throw it in the middle of the field maybe try to pick up half the yardage here on third down set up a shorter field goal if you want to go for three or put yourself in position to go for it on fourth down if you choose to go for the end zone. And Ken, that's a possibility. The wind really has not been a factor tonight. It's picked up a little bit, and it would be blowing in the face of the Brenham kicker or maybe a slight crosswind making a field goal attempt just a little more difficult than maybe about an hour ago. Yeah, we saw them miss one going the opposite direction in the first period. Third and goal from the 22-yard line. They've had a couple of five wide receiver formations tonight. Everybody bunched up, empty backfield. Caleb Hill just flinging one downfield. And lucky that one wasn't picked. It's fourth down. Boy, he had Tyler Watts wide open in the flat to his left, but the pressure was too heavy for him to see him. Fourth down, All right, Coach, what do you do here? Looks like they're going to go for it. Well, their longest field goal of the season has been 35 yards. They're going to tee this one up. It's going to be about a 37-yard attempt. Tien Pham. Does he have the leg? He does. Yes, he does. It's good. 37-yard field goal into a slight breeze, and the Cubs come away from, with points. After two times, they had to recover their own fumbles just to continue the drive. 14-10, Texas City with the lead, but maybe some momentum for Brenham as we near the half. Well, that's huge for Brenham to come out with three points on that possession rather than zero. They 
capitalize. Nice drive. Began back at their own 45. Took 2.13 off the clock. 37-yard field goal is good. And so now we have a four-point game, 20 seconds to go. But again, you want to keep it away from these dynamic kick returners of the Stingarees. Certainly do. The Foremans, Armante and Deontay. Number 10, Colin Kokorst. Kokorst will kick off. We've already seen That's Brenham try game. one Monday, onside three. kick, but they will no doubt just seven. punch one downfield here. Not much of a run up from Kolkhorst. Kicking this one in the direction of Foreman on the boundary. Boy, he's a tough man to tackle. The boundary is your best friend when Deontay Foreman's got a head of steam. Well, they got 16 seconds and one timeout. He's run out of bounds by the cap. Number 22, Ryan Nunn. We look at the Region 3, where we are tonight, how they got here. Last week, Texas City with a 28-zip shutout of Fort Bend, Ridgepoint. First and 10, Texas and City. Brenham, a shootout, a squeaker over Dayton, 31 to 30. Let's set up where we are right now in this regional semifinal. How about the two Brenham wins so far, 35-30, 31-30. They found ways to advance. The Sting's not really a passing team. With 16 seconds left, they will run here. And Armante Foreman steps out after he picks up 12 and only took six seconds on the play. So there may be one more play away from being in that uh, position where they could try one for the end zone or think about a very long field goal. Yeah, and with that timeout remaining, they can run it, they can throw it, they can throw it to the middle of the field. But they still have an opportunity here. We talked about going back in time about 20 years ago to when teams ran the football almost exclusively, and even with 16 seconds to go in the half, the Stings bring on their Wildcat quarterback and run the football. <laughs> well, they have the big guy, they have Andrew Allen back in for this throwing play. Trips to the right, oh. Allen spins out of pressure and throws one away. I don't believe he's out of the tackle box and there's the flag. They threw one out of bounds, but he wasn't outside the area where he gets free reign to chuck one to the sideline. The officials will confer. And it was the line judge, ironically enough, who threw that flag as opposed to our referee. It'll be a loss of down. So it'll be second down from the spot where he threw the football. Three seconds remaining, so only time for one more play regardless. So you'll look for a Hail Mary here. Results in a loss of down, ball replays at the spot of the foul. Second down. When does the clock start now? Uh, incomplete pass, so it'll start on the snap. Well, it you should be a penalty, though. That it's more of a roughing or a uh, intentional grounding rather than. The incomplete pass, but the clock will apparently start with the snap. One more play for the Stings. Again, three receivers to the right. We'll see if Allen has enough time to let one go. He's being chased. He's being dropped. And that'll complete our first half tonight from Cyprus. What a night for high school football. We've got a good one. Renham led early. Texas City ran off 14 straight. Renham scored last. 14-10 stings at the half on the Legacy Sports Network. Football teams in Texas collide inside AT&T Stadium, all vying to be crowned champions. Get your tickets now for the UIL State Championships presented by State Farm. Be a part of this Texas tradition. Log on to Ticketmaster.com. The Wrangler Road.
Welcome to the championship starts right here on Fox Sports Southwest. Well, we start with two of the best teams in Class 4A. All season long, Texas has turned to Fox Sports Southwest for wall-to-wall -wall gridiron action. But who is at Jasper, Texas tonight? They would turn it over on down. Keep sending in those photos. The Wrangler Road to the Championship brings you every bit of high school football until this year's champions are crowned. Watch the Wrangler Road to the Championship on Fox Sports Southwest, brought to you in part by Cavenders. If it's high school football, it's on Fox Sports Southwest. We're your home for comprehensive coverage every game night. Get all the Texas high school football scores and highlights from across the state. High School Scoreboard Live on Fox Sports Southwest. Football fans, I see a Raising Cane's tailgate in your sights. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but you have it in you to tackle that tailgate. To devour enough fresh, never ever frozen chicken fingers and cane sauce to make tailgate history. Show Thirst Who's Boss with sweet tea and lemonade. Not by the cup, but by the jug. Because this is our house. And today, you eat with the best of them. Raising Cane's, one love. Official sponsor of all things that make game day delicious. Texas City High School proudly presents the award-winning Stingerette Dance Team. The team is under the field direction of the following military officers. Senior Lieutenant Marissa Alamang, Junior Lieutenant Cameron Cotton. Senior Lieutenant Cassie Iges. Lieutenant Colonel Michaela Clay. Colonel Sarah Hodges. Social Officers and Food President Kara Dean. Secretary Rosie Diaz. Treasurer Charity Crump. Historian Megan Newman. Tonight, the Stingerettes will be performing a palm routine to the military selection of Mickey. The Stingerettes are under the direction of directors Miss Ashley Hardage and Miss Lindsay Owens.
Texas, the award-winning Texas City High School Sting Marching Band. The band has enjoyed an incredible season, including taking second place at the Lamar Khan Marching Festival, superior ratings at the KD Marching Invitationals, and TCISE Marching Festival, and the Region 17 UIL Marching Contest. The band concluded their season as an Area F Marching Finalist Missing State Marching Contest by only four spots. Tonight, the band will be performing some classic tunes made famous by Aretha Franklin with choreography from the TCHS Color Guard. Here is Proud Mary to Spect. Drum majors, is your band ready? Texas City High School State. <laughs> High School Take a moment and some of our biggest supporters. Joseph Figarelli, Texas City ISD Director of Performing and Visual Arts. Holly LaRoe, Texas City High School Principal. Dr. Sigula, Texas City ISD Superintendent. Margaret Lee, Assistant Superintendent of Business and Operations. Karen Miller, Assistant Superintendent of Support and our wonderful friend. Thank you everyone for such a memorable season.
And now introducing the Brenham 18. Bell Renee Cosin. Bell officers are Major, Major Casey Joslock, Captain Samantha Lindsay, First Lieutenant Bonnie Sturrock, Second Lieutenant Kara Binky, Special Officer Mackenzie Summer. hit radioactive featuring the Burnham High School color guard.
backup fans on your feet and let's hear it. Give me a C. a. Give me a U. Yeah. Give me a B. a. Give me an S. Yeah. What's that spell? Yeah. I can't hear you. Yeah. One more time. Go yeah. Cubs.
check three. Check one. Check. Oh, check one. Check It's a 14-10, Brenham lead, or uh, Texas City rather, over Brenham. I'm Brett Dolan with Ken Moore. Entertaining football game through two quarters. It has been. Both teams doing well offensively, doing even better defensively. A couple of big turnovers in this ball game. Brenham had the big turnover, then Texas City with the pick six to come back, take the lead. The field goal right before halftime has us at a 14 point advantage at this point in the ball game. What do you think we're going to see here in the third quarter? I think we're going to see a lot more of the same. Both teams are going to try to keep it on the ground. We've seen Brenham actually have some success throwing the football there right before halftime, so we may see them open it up a little bit more, but I think it's going to be a ball control ball game. Which team can commit the fewest turnovers? That has been the big turning point so far here in this first half. I would agree. Hold on to the football, play a clean game. you got a pretty good shot. Texas City leading Brenham at the half. 14-10, we're about ready for third quarter action. We'll come back to the very center and get things started on the Legacy Sports Network. The time is now for live video highlights of your school's march to excellence. News sets up inside of the pitch. High fly to left. It's up, it's deep, and it's going to be gone! Legacy Sports Network brings you high-quality HD video broadcasted by the best in the business. Handoff, Adam Taylor lunges to the end zone, touchdown! This is the most, one of the most exciting things. With all the runs, hits, scores, and more, we're building a legacy one game at a time. Gerald, you guys at Legacy do an unbelievable job. Join us on pay-per-view or video live streaming your favorite high school and college athletics at LegacySportsNetwork.com. Legacy Sports Network is going to be bringing this presentation to your home. With our Name Your Price tool, people pick a price and we help them find a policy that works for them. Also, We've been working on something very special. One day, the world, no, the universe, will have the pricing power they deserve. We'll work on it. Watch him. When you have a medical emergency, think Physicians ER. You will be seen by a board-certified doctor in less than 10 minutes. With immediate results on labs, x-rays, and CAT scans. For emergency care greater than urgent care, think Physicians ER. Accidents happen anytime, any place. When you need to be seen fast, visit Physicians ER. Visit PhysiciansER.com for a location nearest you. Temperatures. 14-10, Texas City with the lead. Temperatures dropping as the excitement level rises. Good entertaining first half, and we're ready for a third quarter action. Brenham Cubs in their green uniforms, white pants. They had an early 7-0 lead. Texas City ran off 14 straight with a couple of touchdowns, but Brenham had the big field goal with about 20 seconds to go at the end of the half. There's a look at the Stingarees, undefeated 12-0 this season. They've not been tested, Ken, really, in either of their first couple of playoff wins, while Brenham's had a couple of exciting victories. Yeah, Brenham is definitely playoff tested as we look at some of the numbers from the season from both ball clubs. As you look at the rushing totals for both ball clubs, Texas City over 3,900 yards on the season, Brenham over 2,900 on the season. 
those are the big numbers to look at. And also, you look at the point comparison. Both teams outscoring their opponents by an average of about 40 to 15 throughout the season. Here tonight, both defenses doing a great job. Forcing turnovers, two turnovers by Texas City. Brenham had the pick six. Therefore, we have this 14-10 ball game as we look at the final 24 minutes. I love that comparison. The two teams combined for more than 1,000 points this year. Get a lower scoring game tonight. The Stingerees will get it first to start our second half. This one in the direction of Deontay Form. You really don't want to kick to him, but the Cubs do a great job covering the play. And Foreman dropped at the 31. Taking the kick at his 28 yard line of Deontay Foreman, number seven. Look at the quarterback comparison. These are season numbers. Look at Andrew Allen, 70 of 146. 1,200 yards. He's also rushed it for 286. Caleb Peel, on the other hand, 1,476 yards through the air, only 19 yards on the ground. So you see he's not much of a rusher. So the Stings will go from the I formation. Foreman lined up as the tailback. The give goes to the first man through, and that's Donald Lynch. We talked about this one-two combination, Lynch and Foreman. Usually they alternate possessions, both in the backfield in that first play. And, uh, For Lynch, first play went to both guys Lynch over 1,000 yards on the season. Foreman with nearly 2,000. Smith, Lynch with 1100. The foreman also goes both ways as the right defensive end, so he needs a breather every once in a while on the offensive side of the ball. Gain of five in the first play. How about Foreman? Changing directions. Deontay Foreman with a block. He's got the Austin's touchdown, Texas City. 64 yards. Like I said, every once in a while, Foreman needs a break because he goes both ways. He didn't carry it on the first run of the second half, but look what he did on the second run as he bounces it outside, and you see that tremendous speed, the long strides as he takes it 64 yards to the house. Zach Powell with a pick six earlier provided Foreman a nice block. Place to add the extra point. Did he get it through? Yes, that's good. The point after by so the Stingerees respond early. Here in our third quarter, the lead is 11 over Brenham on the Legacy Sports Network. I got no Life is about making good choices. So when it comes to choosing the best emergency medical care, choose Neighbors Emergency Center. You could choose to see a board certified physician at Neighbors Emergency Center right away. Or you could choose to wait. You could choose to receive top quality imaging and laboratory services. Or you could choose to wait. You could choose to enjoy our comfortable private treatment rooms. Or you could choose to wait. You could choose to receive expert medical treatment while being treated like one of the family. Or you could choose to wait. You could choose to get back to your life. Or you get the picture. So if you have a medical emergency any time, day or night, the choice is clear. With Neighbors Emergency Center. Care that counts. Experience that matters. Here's the short kick taken near the 30. It's Cortland Sutton. And he'll be dropped and covered at about the 33. Well, that last Taking run, Deontay Foreman, 64 yard line, yards scamper, made it 21 to 10. Was brought to you by Texas First Bank. Been serving the community since 1973. Money to land if you're a business owner in need of a commercial or equipment loan called Texas First Bank. They offer competitive rates, superior service, and the decisions are made locally. They're also a preferred SBA lender, TexasFirstBank.com. Proud sponsor of the Texas City Stingerees, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Deontay Foreman, that run puts him over 2,000 yards on the season. Here's Ernest Patterson, hoping to respond. Nice carry on first down. 
38. Patterson came in with over 2,100 yards on the ground, 2,111 to be exact. They kept him in check in that first half. They're going to need a big second half out of Patterson, will the Cubs, to try to stay in this ball game. Pick up a four, second down and six. Boy, Bretham, to me, it felt like they had gained some momentum back with that field goal at the end of the second quarter. We're then to see Foreman go 64 yards on the first drive in the third. Puts them a bit behind the eight ball, adding to the importance of this drive, facing a second and five here. Hill to throw in the play action. Looking downfield for Sutton. Foreman Sutton, what a catch! Up over the defensive back and carries it all the way down to the 25. Once again, they challenge Amarte Foreman over here on the near side. This time they win the battle one-on-one. -on -one. The second goes high to come down with the reception. And all of a sudden, the Cubs in scoring position. Well, Ken, a couple of times tonight, you felt like maybe the Stingerees had, had uh, changed momentum only to see Brenham get a couple of big pass plays. Here's another one. Pass is complete to Holman. James Holman to the 10. Back-to-back hey, -back pass plays from Caleb Hill, Hill involving two James different run and wide receivers. As you mentioned, Caleb Hill, very efficient on the season. 61% passer, 14 touchdowns, four interceptions now after the pick six in the first half. But he's been very solid so far here in 2013. So just like that, the Cubs on the doorstep, but maybe answering that Texas City touchdown. First and goal from the 10. Five wide receivers involved in this formation. Hill looking to throw over the middle. Got his man at the end zone. He should be in. It's Cortland Sutton. And able to catch touchdown number six. And the Cubs answer quickly. Well, you watch him as he just goes right across the middle. He got bumped at the line of scrimmage, but Sutton able to make the reception and get into the end zone, and the Cubs come right back. And their extra point sneaks through. It's good. Each team with a touchdown. Not even three minutes into our third quarter. Texas City leads, but now it's 21-17 on the Legacy Sports Network. McDonald's dollar menu just keeps getting better. Introducing the all new mouthwatering grilled onion cheddar burger topped with melty white cheddar and caramelized onions. Plus all your tasty favorites for just a dollar each. Every day, as always, there's a lot to love for a little on McDonald's dollar menu. the pageantry of high school football here in Texas. Better bring the jacket tonight. Good ball game though, 21-17 our score. Texas City with the lead, they'll get the football back. I think we're down into about the mid 40s now, but as you mentioned, as the temperatures drop, the scoring continues to increase. Reasonable field position for Texas City. Short kick. Taken by one of the upmen. Well, that was Marshall Servic, the coach's kid, and he's down at the 37. Coming out of the locker room, both teams with some quick strikes. Texas City with a 48 second drive to go up 21 10 on the Deontay Foreman 64 yard touchdown. The Cubs come right back. 67 yard drive, took a minute 32 off the clock. Portland set a 10 yard touchdown reception. 21 17, 9 34 to go here in the third period. Donald Lynch lines up as the tailback. Allen will play fake to him. He's going to go up top. 
pass intended for Armonte Foreman. He was open even with double coverage, but the pass was underthrown. For number three, Armonte Foreman. Foreman brothers on their way to Texas next year. A package deal, I guess, for Mac Brown and company, but he's getting a couple of good ones. I will take it. <laughs> no, you will. <laughs> I'll emphasize the week. Second out of ten. Need all the ones we can get. They looked pretty good last night, though. It's those Red Raiders. They did. Texas City looking good tonight, leading 21-17, but now facing a second 10. Lynch fighting for yards. He'll reach the 40, but a short gain. It'll be third and long for the Stings. And um, sprint of defense trying to come up with a three and out. Give the ball back to their offense. Eric Yeager in on the stop. And Caleb Hill, who's been hot third down the last couple of quarters. We'll see if it's time for it. Come up with a big play here on third and eight. Well, that's a good point. The last two times Brenham has had the football, they scored 10 points in those two drives. So Texas City would just as soon not give them the football back with decent field position, but they'll have to convert a third and eight. Deontay Foreman's going to throw. And trying to lead his quarterback, Andrew Allen, let him too far. It'll be fourth down. Pass is incomplete. Eight. Foreman can do a lot. We've seen him returning kicks. We've seen him play defense. We've seen him carry the football, but maybe not throwing the football. <laughs> yeah, that play did not go as planned as it fell harmlessly to the turf. So a three and out by the Brenham defense. Should set him up in decent field position. for Texas City. Rodriguez Trey Rodriguez punting towards Lockett. He almost ran himself right into a block, but gets away a pretty good punt. And this will take a Texas City bounce inside the 20. Good kick. Continuing to roll to the 18. So the good news for Brenham, they had the football back. The bad news, not exactly great field position in so doing. Yeah, 44-yard punt, zero on the return. The Cubs will start inside their own 20. Out of our 4A Division II semifinal game. Good look at Caleb Hill talking with Coach West as he hits back on the field and kind of a shaky start for Hill, including a pick six, but he's looked much better in these last two or three drives. Yeah, you see his confidence starting to build, his receivers starting to find some holes in his stinkery defense as they have pretty much abandoned the running game here in the second half. Hill stepped up to throw, but then he got dropped. Corey Robinson sacked him from the backside and dropped him on his front side because he planted him. <laughs> See it again here. A lot of white shirts around the QB. Great job by Robinson. He's one of the leading tackles on the season. That's his second sack on the year. One man we've not heard a lot of tonight is Devontae Hinton, really their leader on defense, but he's had some help up front. Not much available on. And it'll be third and long. Bonilla on that last stop. We've also called his name a handful of times tonight for the Texas City defense. And well, Hill has thrown the football much better as of late. Uh, this is not exactly what they had drawn up. Big play here for the Texas City defense. Trip receivers to the far left. Third and 14. Hill will roll and throw. One hit a catch. James Holman with the catch in the first down. How did he catch that one? That was a tremendous grab. The throw from Hill was behind him. Two of the three receivers on the outside will run a down and out. Confuse the Texas City defense, but a tremendous grab picks up the first down. One handed catch before Jordan Coffey popped him out of bounds, but it's marked at the 32, a fresh set of downs. Good look at Holman. It's been a big part of this passing game tonight for Brenham. Hill to throw again, and that time the ball was already over his target, Trevante Johnson, by the time the receiver looked up. Corey Johnson on coverage. Looks like Coach West has made up his mind that he's not going to be able to run against his front seven of Texas City. And he's decided to let his quarterback, Caleb Hill, 
air it out here in the second half, trailing by four. It's really taken Ernest Patterson out of this game, so to speak. See Patterson lined up to the left of Hill from the gun. Patterson will carry. Take that, Patterson says. I'm not out of this game. He's inside the 45. Ernest Patterson got loose for one of the few times tonight. 26-yard rumble, his biggest run of the night for Patterson. He had a touchdown earlier in the game, Henson on the tackle. But a nice play design that time as they pull both the guard and tackle from left to right. That opened up the hole for Patterson for the 26-yard game. So the Cubs on the stingery side of the field. There's Holman again. Holman with a cutback and dropped inside the 20. 23-yard gain. And the Cubs churning up some big plays. Yeah, you see the skill position players of the Cubs coming into action once again. And again, it's just a little down and up by Holman. Starts off, looks like he's doing an out route to the sideline, then he turns it upfield. Texas City having some problems in the secondary, keeping up with Holman. Boy, Holman has a set of hands. Good looking wide receiver. Ball being thrown to his side of the field. Pass was caught underneath to about the 15. Looked like that was Tyler Watts, and it was. It'll be second down. Al coming up from his safety position to make the hit. But again, another completion from Hill. Second down and five. Halfway through our third quarter. Each team with a touchdown. It's a four-point advantage for Texas City at the break, or remains that Patterson working the left side of the line for a couple of more yards. It'll bring up third and short. Another big play in a game of big plays. So a five wide receiver formation. You see two to the left side of your screen. Caleb Hill operating from the gun. Wants to get rid of that football quickly. He does. It's Holman! Touchdown! James Holman had three huge catches on the drive, including a one-handed catch earlier to continue the sequence, and he's rewarded with the touchdown, his seventh of the season. Caleb Hill is on fire, and he is throwing with confidence. He puts that one right on the money between the linebacker and the safety. Well, for those joining us on Fox Football Friday, good timing. Here at Fox Sports Southwest, the extra point is good. We've had three touchdowns already in our third quarter. The Brenham Cubs back in front. They laid it 24 to 21. And you see Hill getting high fives and congratulations. Through the air is what gave the Cubs big chunks of yards against the Texas City defense. That was an 82 yard drive for the Cubs to retake the lead. Caleb Hill with some big third down conversions on that possession, a couple of big passes to Holman, and then you saw the touchdown strike to put them back in front. Now keep in mind, Texas City got the football first here in the third quarter. Deontay Foreman, a future Texas Longhorn, rumbled 64 yards, and it provided a 21-10 Texas City lead. And Ken, just when you thought maybe the Stings had all the momentum. Back-to-back -back touchdowns scored by Brennan. The Cubs have been very resilient so far in this playoffs. A one-point win last week. They're in another shootout here tonight at the Berry Center in Cypress, Texas. Kokorst will kick the football back to Texas City. The Foreman brothers hoping for a chance to return. Armante from the 12. Armante Foreman trying to create some space that he doesn't find that he bumped out of bounds shy of the 25. And the Stingerese undefeated this year, 12 and 0, will get the football back again, really for the first time since maybe halfway through the first quarter. They're on the wrong end of the score as far as they're concerned. Yeah, it's been a back and forth ball game. Texas City really with the lead. 
I mean, they came out, as we, as we mentioned, second play from scrimmage in this half, the 64-yard touchdown run. Looks like they were going to gain some separation, but the Cubs of Brenham showing some resiliency. They've come back to take the lead. Deontay Foreman tripped up. Looked like he was able to get to the corner, but a nice open field tackle was made by Eric Yeager. So Yeager, the linebacker, kept Foreman from maybe a 15, 20 yard carry. It's a gain of two instead as we're inside the five minute mark here in our third quarter from the Berry Center. Both offenses started out slow in the first half, but they've ramped it up here in the second half. Foreman up near the marker, right at the sticks at the 35. Going back to Foreman, I love that pitch play for him, Ken. We saw this team earlier, and the one thing about Foreman, he was churning up eight, nine yards of carry that night. We said a couple of times in the telecast, we just like to see what type of explosiveness he has when he gets to that second level. We saw that very early in the third quarter on that 64-yard run. Yeah, and absolutely. And one thing, one thing that the pitch does for a tailback, it allows him that extra yard or two to survey the defense. When you take a straight handoff, you're really following your fullback, or if you have a pulling guard, you're just going to follow them directly through the hole. But on a pitch play, you have an opportunity to see the linebacker, see the defense, and then make your move. And he got the first down by that much, by half a football. So cool, the Stings fans can't even applaud the first down. They're going to keep their hands in their pockets. Sitting on their hands right now. <laughs> Session stands were full at halftime. Everyone getting that hot chocolate to try to stay warm for the second half. Foreman stuck up with that strength. He might fight forward for a yard, but all kinds of green shirts surrounding the talented ball carrier. And it was Neil Mathis, big number 68, right there in the middle of that pile. And I'll tell you what, both fan bases have traveled well on this Thanksgiving weekend to this football game. Both sides of the stadium, full, very nice turnout. One of the most energetic crowds we've seen this entire season. And really one of the better ball games we've seen in quite some time. Running with the lead, Texas City with a football. Second nine, we'll call it, and there's all kinds of movement. I didn't see the Stings jump. See if not one, but two Cubs came across that line of scrimmage early. We've had a pretty clean ball game. Very few penalties in this one thus far. Offsides, defense, so that second and long, second and almost 10, will be shortened. Texas City, last year again, they lost to Fort Bend Marshall in the area finals. Returned 14 starters, cruised through District 24-4A, 12-0 this year, but trailing late in this third quarter. Second and four, Foreman with the pitch. Foreman drops, and he lost the football, and the Cubs have it. Foreman fumbled and run on with the turnover. Ryan Dunn with the recovery. We'll have to check the replay to see who got the hit, but he got drilled as he crossed the line of scrimmage. Coming up. Looks like that was 15. Desmond maybe. Lockett. Desmond Lockett with the big hit. He had an interception earlier, and he forces a fumble None on that play. With the recovery. So Brennan, old bone, is onside on the home side right now of the Green Monster. They have a first and 10 at the 43 of Texas City. Hill's going to continue to go to the air. He's got his man off the deflection. Travante Johnson with the catch. Armante Foreman got a hand on it. When it looked like Johnson had beaten him. But Johnson played the carom perfectly to the eight yard line. Audio tip drill in reverse. Works for Brent up everything going the Cubs way here in the third period. So Caleb Hill is red hot, working with an empty backfield. Five wide receivers. He gets rid of that football quickly. Does so here. Malik Wilson, the catch, and out of bounds at the two. Malik Wilson, 
14 unanswered points run off by the Cubs and they're on the doorstep of scoring their third consecutive touchdown. So it looked like Brunham went to the air can when they were behind by the 11 points, but now even with the lead, they found something that's working. Find it working, stick to it. Ernest Patterson near the goal line, but he's short by a yard. Patterson started the game with a two yard touchdown run. Was hoping to get another, but it's third and goal from the one yard line. Third turnover of the night for Texas City as Brenham knocking at the door once again. Nearing the two minute mark here in our third quarter. Walter Thomas is now in under center as the quarterback. He will pitch to Jordan Graves. Jordan Graves with the Brenham touchdown. Three straight scores for the Cubs. Well, the Cubs breaking out all the trickery here tonight. They put in the backup quarterback to be the lead blocker after the pitch. And Graves takes it in for a touchdown. Brenham extended to a nine point lead. Extra point away from a 10 point advantage. Fam trying to add the extra point. That's blocked. And the Stings might have a chance to take this one back. And there's a marker down. It was picked up by the Stingerees. And it looked like for a second I thought Jordan Coffey was going to be able to return it. Maybe going about 104 yards for two points. <laughs> That's a big missed extra point. That could be huge later in this ball game. And again, another conference by the officials. Like a horse collar of some sort. Might be talking about when they actually execute this penalty. Well, our official is ready to give us the indication, and then he thought, let's talk about this again. Three straight touchdowns for Brenham. Face mask, not a horse collar. We'll step aside, 30 to 21, Brenham with the lead. just keeps getting better. Introducing the all new mouth-watering grilled onion cheddar burger topped with melty white cheddar and caramelized onions. Plus all your tasty favorites for just a dollar each. Every day, as always, there's a lot to love for a little on McDonald's dollar menu. to 21 our score run them with the lead and the stings have to be a bit confused I mean they were leading 21 10 early third quarter uh, 20 unanswered points by Brenham in the span of about 10 minutes or really about eight minutes here in the third and Deontay Foreman who fumbled on that last drive dropped the kickoff return he stays on his feet but he won't quite reach the 20 and there's another marker down it's starting to get a little bit chippy out here now as the action starts to ratchet up just a bit. A little the stingery side of the field is a little bit of shell shock right now. Down by nine with 2.08 to go in this third period. Here's our indication of the marker. That will not help the process. 
If there was a block in the back end, and I believe our official, it had to come at the very end of this play. I mean, there it is, but the play's almost dead. Yeah, top of the screen, 83. So again, Texas City backed up to their own 10 yard line to begin another drive. Good call, silly penalty. And very little on first down for the Stings. Donald Lynch to carry it. And as good as this rushing offense is, well over 4,000 yards now in their 13th game. They're not built to go through the air. No, they are not. And you see with Brenham that they can go either way. Their running game was not working. They put it in the hands of Caleb Hill. Let him, let him exploit that secondary of Texas City. So now we'll see what Allen and company can do on the other side. Allen with the play fake, has to throw across his body. Well, no, nope, he's gonna go down. Look at all the green shirts surrounding Andrew Allen. There at the bottom of the pile, Talon Shepard, the nose tackle. Jim Michael Adams also involved in that play, but there was some help here for the Cubs. Yeah, they got about five of the big green machine <laughs> <laughs> surrounding Allen on that play. Uh, this is a huge third down for Texas City. They do not want to put their defense right back on the field after giving up three consecutive touchdowns here in the third period. Third and nine facing the Stingerees. The jet sweep to Armonte Foreman. He's going to lose yards on the play. The Brenham defense has come to play. Cortland Sutton, who had a touchdown earlier, had the TFL for the Cubs. Well, watch how they string out this jet sweep. You see them in man-to-man -man coverage. You see Holman tracking, and you see Sutton coming up with the big play. Now they'll be kicking from their own end zone. Trey Rodriguez to kick it away. And it's a low kick, but it sends Lockett out of the vicinity of the football, and it's not going to quite reach midfield. Well, I spoke too soon. It'll be down right at the 50. Also brings us to the end of our third quarter. 41-yard kick, zero on the return. Texas City trailing by nine as we go into the fourth and final period on the Legacy Sports Network. in Texas collide inside AT&T Stadium, all vying to be crowned champions. Get your tickets now for the UIL State Championships presented by State Farm. Be a part of this Texas tradition. Log on to Ticketmaster.com. Long live being comfortable in your own saddle. Long live being tough enough to handle anything. Introducing premium performance, advanced comfort cowboy cut jeans two times longer lasting and made to move with you so you can move like a champion. New advanced comfort from Wrangler. Long live Cowboys. Our spotlight shines on the best and brightest high school athletes and coaches the state of Texas has to offer. Get the latest highlights and exclusive features from across the state every week. High School Spotlight, Sundays and Mondays on Fox Sports Southwest. Twenty unanswered points for Brenham. They had the football at midfield as we switch sides and start the fourth. And Patterson dropped for a loss of one on the first play. Well, Brenham, after going down by 11 points at the beginning of the third period, 20 unanswered to end the quarter. They lead it now by nine. Second down, Hill up top. Hill's got it again. In stride, James Holman. What a game for James Holman. He made three catches on that last drive, including a huge third down, one-handed catch. Finished with a touchdown. How about this catch in traffic? Well, again, look at the throw by Hill. Could that be any more perfect? It's like dropping the biscuit in the basket. Zach Powell was right there in coverage. 
Not much he could do. And it's first and 10 from the Stings, 26. 24 yards on the pass play. Now Ernest Patterson runs right into a wall of Stingerese. It was Hayes, the defensive end, on the stop after what will be no gain. Maybe even a loss of one. Well, Texas City is going to have to make some adjustments. They're going to have to find a way to stop Homer. He's in the slot at the top. Zach Powell is in coverage. Boy, Hill gets rid of that football quickly. There's Holman again, chopped down, but at the stick should have a first down. Powell went low in the tackle. That's a gain of 12, another Brenham first down. Well, that's a one-on-one -on -one advantage. You see Holman again in the slot. Zach Powell cannot cover him one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, that's just a simple option route. He sees Powell to the inside, he turns outside, picks up the first down, moves the chains. Well, Holman came into this game with 26 catches. Not a huge number for a 12-game schedule. His average was over 21 a catch. Both the average and his overall numbers on the rise tonight. Right. It's great coaching by Coach Glenn West. Finding the mismatch in the secondary. Another first down. Patterson almost took that handoff himself from Hill, almost took the snap. Zach Patterson for the Cubs gets the call on the last play. He's tackled by the Stings, number six, Devontae Hinton. Devontae Hinton made that tackle after a gain of two, and the football is marked at the 14. So now the clock begins to become an issue if Brenham wants to milk a few more minutes on their way to maybe their fourth straight touchdown. Absolutely, every second counts in a game like this. Right now, two possession game. But an empty backfield, a five wide receiver formation. They will continue with what has worked this entire second half. Hill, the left-handed quarterback with a quick release, sets up the throw. There's Holman again. He's got it. He's out at the one. Holman was popped out of bounds, shy of the end zone by Powell. But this combination of Hill to Holman has been brilliant tonight. And again, he's working from the inside slot position. No one over him at the line of scrimmage, so he's getting a free release off the line. And it's just a bad matchup right now that the Stingerees have not adjusted to. Jermichael Adams is in the backfield. The pitch play goes to Jordan Graves. He scored earlier. He'll take it in for a second touchdown of the night. Four drives, four touchdowns for Brenham in our second half. It's all going green tonight for the Brenham Cubs. Bring the backup quarterback in. He leads the way through after the quick pitch. Graves takes it in for another short score. Last extra point was blocked from Pham. This one is true. 27 unanswered points by the Brenham Cubs. Back to the Berry Center after this on the Legacy Sports Network. Football fans, I see a Raising Cane's tailgate in your sights. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but you have it in you to tackle that tailgate. To devour enough fresh, never ever frozen chicken fingers and cane sauce to make tailgate history. Show Thirst Who's Boss with sweet tea and lemonade. Not by the cup, but by the jug. Because this is our house. And today, you eat with the best of them. Raising Cane's, one love. Official sponsor of all things that make game day delicious. With our Name Your Price tool, people pick a price and we help them find a policy that works for them. Also, we've been working on something very special. One day, the world, no, the universe, will have the pricing power they deserve. We'll work on it. Watch him. Stinger East ready to get the football back, but you can see all the emotion in the favor of the Brenham Cubs. Oh, 
move to the home side of the field with about 10 minutes to go in the third period, and it hasn't moved. Foreman from the 10. Armante Foreman hoping to make a play. Armante Foreman up near the 40. And Ken Moore, where did the Stingeries go from here offensively? Now down 16 points with time and issue. Well, the main thing for them is that it's still a two possession game. Two touchdowns and two two point conversions. So they need to put together a drive where they can get into the end zone, get some energy and some momentum on the other side of the field but they have to give their defense some rest. They cannot afford to go three and out on this possession. Yeah, really, they need to score on this drive. Andrew Allen under center. They give to Foreman. Foreman behind a convoy of blockers will churn out 10 on first down, move the sticks again. Number seven, he gets the call around the right side. I think yeah, you're right. Foreman. This is a must score Texas possession for Texas, Texas City. This is a team that averages about 110 yards a game passing. And they can't expect to find that magic here in possibly the last eight minutes of their season, last nine minutes. And if they're going to stay on the ground, have to keep churning out gains like that. Deontay Foreman again into the second level, tackled from behind, pushed forward, dropped at the 37. A gain of 11, followed by a gain of 14 for the future Texas Longhorn. Closest game they had all season was back on October 11 against Friendswood. They won that game 45 to 37. And that was a game they had five rushing touchdowns. Foreman had three, Lynch had two. Lynch has been quiet tonight. Foreman's had his moments. He did fumble on that last drive. There he's able to lean forward to the 31. Seven, Gain of six Norman. on first down as we go inside eight and a half minutes. The turnovers have been critical for the Stingerees tonight. Three turnovers have led to 14 Brenham points. Brenham did have a pick six of their own. They gave seven back, but they've won the turnover battle tonight as Brenham. Second four, Stings on the move. Allen goes to the air. He's going to go up top, looking for the touchdown. He's got it! Armonte Foreman! 31 yards. And that is his ninth receiving touchdown of the year and probably none bigger this season. Well, you'll see Foreman one on one. Allen finds him deep, just outruns the coverage, makes the grab, and now the Stingerees will set up to go for two. What a throw from Andrew Allen. You're right, they'll go for two. As you mentioned, when it was 16 points, still a two possession game, but that implies that they can get this two point conversion and there is some confusion. They still got 15 seconds on the play clock. You really don't want to burn a timeout here if you don't have to. Down well, to eight. Play clock ticking away. See if they just give it to Foreman. Allen will roll, flings one to the back of the end zone. He had his man briefly, but the pass was out of the reach. Looked like Allen might be able to find his tight end, Bobby O'Neill. But it remains a 10-point game. We'll see it again. Yeah, you see the play fake. And the pass just too high, too long for the open receiver. So now Texas City still down by 10 points, but they still have life with 8-10 remaining. Well, it solves the issue of four unanswered touchdowns by Brenham, and it cuts into this deficit, but it's still a 10-point game, and it, we're going to find out what this Texas City defense is made of when the Cubs get the football back. It's do or die for them right now. As we mentioned, this is a defense that's given up less than 20 points per game on the year. The only times they've given up more than 20. They gave up 37, as we mentioned, to Friendswood. They gave up 25 to Galveston Ball. That was a 30-point win there. They also gave up 25 to Baytown Lee in a 56-25 victory there. Tonight, they've given up the most points. They've allowed all season 37 to the Brenham Cubs. It's amazing once you get to this portion of the playoff schedule this deep, there are no weak teams. Everybody's a good team, and you could expect 
every squad's best effort. I think we've seen that tonight. It's all about how you handle your adversity. No more adversity than them being down by 16 points in the final period. But now you've cut it to 10. Fair catch by Lockett at the 35. So no return, but good field position for the Cubs. And we'll see what this high-powered offense can do with 8-10 to go in our game. Now what you don't want to do is Brenham is going to a shell and try to drain the clock too early. You want to stick with what's been working. Caleb Hill has been hot. They have not been able to control James Holman. You sprinkle in a little bit of Patterson here and there just to keep the defense honest, but you continue doing what you do and try to attack the Stingray defense. We'll see if Patterson, though, gets a few carries, and he will here on first down. Nothing there, and we've seen that tonight. If for no other reason, you know, a couple of incomplete passes will leave a lot of time on that clock. Maybe they can milk an extra 45 seconds or a minute before they're in a passing situation. Yeah, I don't mind mixing in a run or two, but you don't want to go exclusively to the ground game, and you see them here go back to the empty set. See the three wide receivers to the left. Caleb Hill, quick release quarterback. His pass complete again. It's Tyler Watts. He's out of bounds at the 40. Probably didn't want to do that. Picked up some positive yards, but it'll be third and about four and a half. So we we'll go back to the beginning of the ball game. We talked about one of our keys being third down efficiency. This is one of the biggest third downs of the evening, the biggest of the night for the Texas City defense. And on that far sideline, no fans are rising to their feet now. No more hands in pocket for the Stingery fans. They need a big defensive stop from their ball club. Big play. Texas City defense would be wise to find James Holman lines up to the right. Hill looking in that direction. There he is. Holman's got it again in Texas City territory. Still on his feet to the 40. The football's out, but the officials had blown the play dead. Forward progress was stopped. Holman again. He has to be up near 10 catches. Well, again, Holman, a free release. No one there. Just right in the middle of the zone. And it's an easy pitch and catch. No pressure on the quarterback. No pressure on the receiver. It's like seven on seven. I'll tell you what, I might want to see that one again if this was the college game on whether he had that football coming out before his back touched. It wasn't a knee issue because he was going down on his back. Yeah, it was close. Seven minutes to go. Patterson will rumble for a couple of yards, and he's dropped. But maybe some air came out of that Texas City defense not being able to get off the field when the crowd was rising up and they felt maybe some uh, opportunities to get the football back down, down only 10. Situation now where you start looking for the turnover, trying to strip the football. Problem sometimes arises, you try to strip the football and you forget to tackle the run. That's right. Now, Brenham's had four straight touchdowns. Is this only their fifth drive in the second half? It is. Patterson's dropped at the 40. Four, so four drives, touchdowns. four touchdowns. They're four for four. <laughs> <laughs> That's efficient. Patterson, number five. But it's third and long, so another opportunity for Texas City, even though some valuable time has ticked away since their last third and long situation. Yeah, those four drives were impressive. 67 yards, 82 yards, 57 yards, and 50 yards. So there were no gimmies in those drives. They were all well earned. See Caleb Hill, he went to the sideline to get that play, leaving nothing to chance. He'll bring it back on himself and instruct his teammates. Play clock's at two. I don't know if they realize that. It's at one, they just get it off. Patterson with the carry, and he's going backwards. Patterson was dropped. And you saw the play made by Texas City when they had to. Andrew Allen, who's the quarterback, makes the biggest play of the night on the defensive side. I am shocked that Brenham did not put the football in the air. So now fourth down, they'll have to punt this one away. And they'll let the play clock run all the way down before they do it. They can take it to about the five minute mark and Hill, you see him only about five or six yards deep. He's kicked or punted from that formation a few times already. Now he'll take a couple of steps backwards. 
Uh -oh. oh, he got it blocked. Football still loose. No scoop and score, but the Stings have it at the 35. Wow. That was a momentum shifter. Ken, if you're going to punt, why not draw back? Why take that short kick? Oh, we've seen it a few times today, but you're inviting danger. Well, he really took his time with the kick as well. Andrew Allen, the quarterback again. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. Allen had the great touchdown pass perfectly thrown to Armonte Foreman to cut it to 10. He made a huge tackle on third down, and he blocks the punt. Welcome to 4A football. Well, we've seen a little bit of everything here tonight. Block extra points, block punt, pick six. <laughs> My goodness. Here comes, and here the, comes reverse. the double reverse. And Lynch needs a block. And he doesn't get it. Popped out of bounds at about the 32 after a short game. So Coach Surabic going deep in the playbook. He says, sees it in jeopardy. The exchange bobbled for a second. Pretty good pursuit on the corner by Eric Yeager. And then you see the tackle made by Desmond Lockett. Did stop the clock, however, second and seven. Well, I go up top for Armonte Foreman again. Oh, you're thinking what I'm thinking, but look who's holding him. Holman. <laughs> Boy, I love this two-way game. Go. Armonte Foreman, the intended target. And it looked out like he had a chance to make the catch, but the pass led him too far out of bounds. Oh, that's some good football tonight, isn't it? <laughs> My goodness. You see some athletes on both sides of the field laying it out offensively and defensively. The best of the best going at it. I mean, look at that huddle right there. There's not much space to put any of those decals or stickers on this veteran Texas City team. All loaded up with their notoriety. Came in undefeated. They've scored 27 points tonight, but they're down by 10. Allen will dump one off to Lynch. Lynch angling right. And he's out of bounds after maybe a gain of two or three. So it's going to bring up a third down. And the Stings need to make a play. Make that fourth down. Fourth and five. Well, this could be the ball game here, Ken Moore. Yeah, they have to convert. They have to convert. I think they're going to take a timeout. So whatever their best fourth and five play is on their chart, they're going to draw it up right now. Burn them if you've got them. <laughs> that was 435 to play. Brenham finally stopped after four drives and four touchdowns in the second half. They were denied the end zone, and then their punt was blocked. But Texas City in a fourth down situation where if they do not move the sticks, the drive is over and their season could be over. Again here, do you go to one of the foremans? Which one? I'll be honest with you, Ken. If you spread the field out enough, I would not be opposed to even running Deontay Foreman. I mean, here's a guy averaging 10 yards a carry. And at least as far as this Cubs defense is concerned, they have to be at least guarding against the pass. Allen, not much of a scrambler. Here come the Stings back on the field. Fourth and five. Everybody in this beautiful facility up on their feet. Ten point lead for Brenham. Texas City, the football. Tight formation. Surprised at that. Allen back. He will throw. Armonte Foreman's got it. First down, Texas City. To the 22. Wow. That pass was a little bit high. Good catch, good hands from Armonte Foreman. Holman on the coverage, one on one. Two of the best athletes. Foreman makes the catch. Drive continues. Texas City has to burn a timeout. Oh boy, Personnel that, problems. That's a problem. You're down to one and you're down by 10 points. You need all your timeouts. That's a problem now. Coach Servant 
on the sideline trying to get his offense on the same page. Well, the game brought to you by Texas First Bank. They have been serving the community since 1973, and it's money to lend if you are a business owner in need of a commercial or equipment loan called Texas First Bank. They offer competitive rates, superior service, and the decisions are made locally. They are also a preferred SBA lender, TexasFirstBank.com. Proud sponsor of the Texas City Stingerees, equal housing lender and member FDIC. Stinger is on the march. Deontay Foreman with a head of steam, rumbling inside the 10. Clock stop, first down, Texas City, first and goal. 13-yard run by Foreman. Now they'll go to up tempo, no huddle. Well, you have to, and you'll see oh, Allen spike boy. the ball. I'm surprised with that, wow. they were set up. Especially when you consider, Kent, even if you score a touchdown here, you've still got to get one more stop out of that Brenham offense. Yeah, you don't want to waste a down, and Brenham was totally discombobulated defensively. I mean, if you just simply hand the football off there, you pick up an easy four or five yards. Like a pitch sweep to Foreman. If he gets the corner, that's fine. If otherwise, maybe he could step out, stop the clock, but you could pick up positive yardage. Now it's second and goal from the nine from an eye formation. Foreman tried to stay on his feet, nowhere to go. He lost the football. Was he down? Yes, the line judge says he was down. But valuable time will tick away as we go inside four minutes. Surprised with that play call? Oh, not really surprised by the play call. Just Foreman got tripped up by his own offensive lineman. Now it's third and goal, and that spike on first down becomes a bigger factor. Allen to throw. He's got his man for the touchdown. Trace Rodriguez. Yes. And I tell you what, after that last play, the coaches called Rodriguez over. He had ran to the end zone. He ran straight back to the coach. Coach gave him the play. He came in, gave it to Allen. So obviously the coaches saw something on that far side that said the slant was open. It was wide open, and they get it in for six. He was being given a huge cushion. And the extra point from Clays is good. Just the second touchdown all season for Rodriguez. Don't go anywhere. We've got a three-point game, 3.38 three, to play. Going our ball game. Brennan 37, Texas City 34. It's time to go back in time. Share in the merriment of hundreds of live performances, the taste of over a thousand foods, and the fun of dozens of games and rides. And be sure to enjoy special savings opening weekend, October 12th and 13th. Brought to you by DeMontron, Coca-Cola, huzzah! You can like us on Facebook at Legacy Sports Network. Also, follow us on Twitter, twitter.com, Legacy Sports Net. And you can watch the rebroadcast on YouTube, the Legacy Sports Network channel on YouTube. Boy, what a great ball game. Coming down to the final three and a half minutes, Texas City back in it. After trailing by 16, only down by three. 37 to 34. Brenham's expecting the onside kick, and they're going to get it. This is a tremendous onside kick. The football's loose, and the Cubs have it. I think it's the quarterback, Hill, who recovered it. It is. A couple of stingerees ran right by the football. Recovering a the flyby, and Hill recovers. I don't, even though it was a good onside kick, 
I don't know if I agree with the strategy. You still have 336 to go. You do only have one timeout. Your defense has been struggling. So I think that's more of a concern against your defense being able to stop this Brenham attack. I think you mentioned a good point. They had to burn a couple of timeouts as well in that last drive. So one first down could really just about do it. Now Brenham said nope. no success running the football as of late and nothing available on first down. Hayes, 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 the sophomore. He's not built like a sophomore. Six, four, two, fifty. Wow. Plenty now, of time remaining on this play clock. Holman, one on one in the slot. It looks like, is that Allen or is that still Powell? It's Allen. Hill to throw. Uh -oh. oh, it's picked. Intercepted. And the stings are set up. Devontae Hinton, the leading tackler. There's a flag down in the backfield. Hold on a moment. This be roughing the passer. Indeed. Oh my goodness. Possibly a game deciding call. We're gonna have to see this one again. Negating the INT from Hinton. But Texas. And it provides a fresh set of downs to where maybe Brenham can all about run out this clock. Oh my goodness. Wow. Texas City had that play defense perfectly. They put in Allen to cover Holman. They had Hinton drop in coverage. Wow, huge call. Fresh set of downs, 2.45 to play. Patterson trips and falls. Lucky he didn't lose the football. No gain, second down, but time will become a big issue. Texas City had their full complement of timeouts. Maybe not as big of a situation, but with one, they have to determine when they want to burn it. Yeah. I would say after the second down play, if they can stop them here on second down. Problem is with that 15 yard mark off, even if they can force a punt, they're gonna have terrible field position as opposed to what would have been tremendous field position after that INT. But they did get a block on the last punt, so special teams could be huge coming down the stretch. Two seconds on the play clock. They didn't get it off. No, they, didn't. they didn't get it off. Delay of game. Boy, that is an error that is almost inexcusable. There's 11 men on offense. There's 100 coaches. Somebody <laughs> has to realize the play clock is winding down. Yeah, they tried to eat up all of the play clock, but they took it a little too far. So now you're in a situation where you almost have to throw the football second and 15. And it also stops the clock. We're at the imaginary two-minute warning. Second and 15, a pistol formation with Patterson behind Caleb Hill. Expect to see Patterson carry again, he will. And dropped. I would use my timeout now from Texas City. Camden Marino, the tackle. Timeout called, last T.O by Texas City with a buck 50 to play. Brenham the ball leading by three, but facing a third and 14. And now, Ken, if you're Brenham, if you want to go to the air where they have been very successful in the second half, you risk, of course, an incomplete pass that would serve as another timeout if they think, can't convert. I think when you're playing a team like Texas City, 12 and 0, I don't think you can play conservative. You've been tremendous throughout the night going to Homer. Now, you may have to go somewhere else if he's covered. But I put the football in the air. 
I tell my quarterback, don't force it. If it's not there, take the sack, let the clock continue to run. Don't even throw it away. Just take the sack, the clock will continue to run. And you can burn another 30 to 40 seconds off the clock. If that's the case, if you do take a sack, or if you complete a pass short of the marker where you stay in bounds, Texas City wouldn't even get the football back to about a buck 20, buck 10 left to go, and they'd have a long field ahead of them. At I mean, probably be near a minute. Yep. So, you want a completion, you'll take the sack. You don't want a turnover. You don't want an incompletion. James Holman is the receiver to the top of your screen, outside to the right. Caleb Hill, the quarterback, will hand it off to Patterson. Drop for a loss. Another tackle by Cameron Marino. Back to back, big plays. Texas City will get the football back. Do they have enough time? We're going to find out. Well, they went the conservative route. We'll see how it turns out. Another coaching decision here. You block the last punt if you're Texas City. Do you go for it again, or do you give Armante Foreman a very special player a chance to make a play you go for the block you make sure you don't rough the kicker because <laughs> it's fourth and 16 but roughing would be an automatic first down run i'm ready to call a timeout right now with 106 to play before they punt from their own or from the texas city 46. This was a 14-10 game at the half. Texas City with the lead, only after Brenham kicked a field goal with about 20 seconds to go in our second quarter. First four times the Cubs had the football in the second half, they scored touchdowns. Texas City got their big touchdown effect, back-to-back -to -back touchdown passes from Allen in their last couple of drives. But a roughing the passer penalty negated an INT about three minutes ago that could have been a game changer for the Stinger Reeves. Right. So now, again, I would go for the block. You have to max protect if you're Brenham. Quick kick it, whatever you have to do to get it out of there. <laughs> 106 to play. The winner will advance next week to face the winner of tomorrow's George Ranch Elgin game played here at the Berry Center. A couple of undefeated teams, I believe, going at it tomorrow. Caleb Hill will punt. Foreman will stand back at his 10. Brenham's going to spread this out. Here comes the rush. Hill able to get it away. Armante Foreman, a returnable kick. Foreman and wrapped up with the 15. Tremendous open field tackle. There's a couple of times today we have seen Ryan Nunn make big open field stops. Yeah, Nunn with a huge stop. To stop Foreman one on one in the open field, that's a lot to ask. So now, 85 yards away from Pater, but again, they're only down by three. So they can attempt the field goal if they can get in range. Even though I've mentioned this a few times today, Allen came in completing less than 50% of his passes. He has had back-to-back -back drives now with touchdown tosses. But they start from their 15. Allen had time to throw for just a second. Oh, he's got to get rid of it. Puts that one up for grabs, and it dropped incomplete in front of Foreman. 49 seconds to play, and Allen gets up slowly. He cannot take a sack. Good job to get rid of the football. Let's see what kind of defensive alignment Brenham has in. Two receivers each side. Nickel coverage, five in the secondary. Movement. Going against Texas City, their task becomes five yards more difficult. If you have a hook and ladder, 
some type of trick play. Might be a good time to dial it up. Try to find your one-on-one -on -one matchup somewhere. Allen from his end zone. Heaves one up for grabs and it drops incomplete. Yeah, I'm trying to just pick up a first down here to keep the drive alive, third and 15. They have to get out to the 25 for a first down. You just want to pick up a first down here, keep the drive alive. Undefeated stingerees on the ropes. It's been a great season for Texas City. You know their aspirations were much higher than just this round. But run them through the throwing arm, the left-handed arm of Caleb Hill. Put together quite a second half, and they're 43 seconds away from advancing. Allen needs to make the play. Boy, no one home. He was firing the deep ball. Trey Rodriguez stopped at the 30. It's the ball game 15. right here. Really, the Stingerese haven't been close to completing a pass in their three tries this sequence. Well, not on this drive, they have not, but they've been going for the big play. You have to pick up the first down here. Monte Foreman is your big guy, number three. He's going to be in the slot to the right. There we go. Fourth and 15. That pass is picked. Lockett is second of the game. And Brenham's going to win it. Desmond Lockett's had another big game. Well, again, miscommunication on the route. Allen, this time with time, throws it up the seam. Foreman broke it inside on a post route. They never had a chance on that possession. Cubs take over at the 28, and they're in victory formation. Walter Thomas goes under center. And the Brenham Cubs, when they started this season, in their very first game, they scored seven points against Foster, and they lost the game 10 to seven. They have not lost since. And down 21 to 10 early in the third quarter, the Brenham Cubs will win and advance. They defeat Texas City 37 to 34 and end Texas City season. Back after this on the Legacy Sports Network. Time is now for live video highlights of your school's march to excellence. New sets up inside of the pitch. High fly to left. It's up. It's deep. And it's going to be gone. Legacy Sports Network brings you high quality HD video broadcasted by the best in the business. Handoff. Adam Taylor lunges to the end zone. Touchdown. This is the most, one of the most exciting things. With all the runs, hits, scores, and more, we're building a legacy one game at a time. I appreciate it, Gerald. You guys, the legacy, do an unbelievable job. Join us on pay per view or video live streaming your favorite high school and college athletics at LegacySportsNetwork.com. Legacy Sports Network is going to be bringing this presentation to your home. Unanswered points, quarterback Caleb Hill. 
to Homa in that combination. The entire second half was devastating against the Stingray defense. They hadn't seen anything like it the entire season. They couldn't recover. Texas City undefeated. They, they lose in heartbreaking fashion, but you have to give Brenham credit. They made the adjustments and they found a way to get the points, and then they had a couple of big stops at the end. Yeah, they did, and they had to hang on for dear life. They had to block punt at the end. They got the Stingarays back in position, only down by three points. But in the end, their defense came up big, getting the four and out to end the ball game effectively with the turnover at the end. Four turnovers by Brenham tonight defensively turning away that Stingaree offense. Texas City, their undefeated season is over. Brennan will advance to play the winner of George Ranch and Elgin next week. So for Ken Moore, I'm Brett Dolan. Brennan wins and advances a 37-34 victory over Texas City right here on the Legacy Sports Network.